Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. I'm Chris with a K. Today we're going to be talking about NeoVim. Okay? I've been working on a shell script, Linux shell tutorial series, and a few times over that I've been asked about my Vim setup. And in those videos, I'm actually using default Vim, uh, basically the default setup for regular Vim, because I don't want to have all my shortcuts and stuff show up on the screen and confuse people while I'm doing tutorials on shell scripts. But since people have asked, I thought, hey, I'll show you what I have set up. And the truth be told, about two weeks ago, I actually cleared out my whole setup because it was kind of hodgepodge together and I kind of started from scratch. And by scratch, I mean I wiped everything out and then started using Lazy uh, Vim. So Lazy Vim is a project that does a lot of plugins and installs for you. But then I also have my setup that will uh, disable some of the things they have set up and install some of the things I like, change some of the key combinations to how I like it. And truth be told, you can get this all set up yourself uh, with in a couple of minutes with just like two commands and answering some questions. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I am heavily working on this. I'm making lots of changes, but I'm gonna show you how it works so you can get going and also how you can update uh, in the future to my setup. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I Oh, I have a virtual machine running in the cloud up in Vulture because that's the service I use for my website. I'm not being paid to say that or anything like that. It's just who I use. And I wanted to default set with a default minimal Debian system. So this is a Debian 12 minimal install. So I haven't done anything with it other than login. Let's have a look. Okay, right here I have uh, my Vim setup, my, my NeoVim uh, GitHub repository. So it's GitLab, I said GitHub, gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000 forward slash FBK NeoVim. FBK is Films by Chris. There'll be a link in the description of this video, but hopefully that's easy for you to remember if you're trying to remember when you're out and about. Okay, so uh, there's some dependencies we're going to install by default, and then we're just going to run this little command here, which basically is going to run this setup script, which we'll look at in this video as well. Some people will say, oh, never just run a command like this that runs a script. It's no different than downloading the script and running it. So unless you're going to open up the script and look at it, which you should do, it's not very long. You shouldn't just trust this. But if you're just going to download the script and run it, you might as well just run this one command. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take this. I'm going to go to this. This is a brand new. I don't have to sudo because I'm already root. And again, I'm root just because this is a virtual machine I just spun up and I didn't feel like creating a user. Normally, you would do this as a regular user, but you also might want to do it as your root user for when you're sudoing into Vim. Uh, so I'm going to do apt update just to make sure my repositories are up to date. Then I will paste in, I guess technically I should sudo apt upgrade as well. I really wanted to start didn't want to do anything to this system. Oh, it's just some Linux headers. That's not even going to affect what we're doing because <laughs> we're not even going to reboot. Okay, so we do sudo apt update and then sudo apt upgrade just to make your whole system make sure it's up to date. So again, we're going to grab these dependencies, okay? You can just click this little copy button here or highlight that. Notice the dependencies. Um, I don't have NeoVim or NVim uh, in there in, in the Debian repositories. It's labeled as NeoVim, but once it's installed, it's NVim. And the reason for that is because this setup only works with newer versions of Vim. And if you're running Debian stable, which will have older packages on it, at least at the time of recording this, uh, or at least what I'm running on my servers, the version of Debian or version of NeoVim on Debian installs, those Debian installs are seven point something. Now on my main machines, like this machine I'm working on here is Debian SID, which is unstable, which is, a newer version, but for this to work on, you need the, the, the a newer version of NeoVim, and my script here will actually pull that down from the website. Again, we'll look at that in a moment. So I'm gonna copy these prerequisites. I'm gonna paste that in here, and it's gonna install it. Now, after this, we can paste in that other command, which is gonna run my setup script, which is gonna pull down all the lazy, the first part of it is like lazy Vim stuff. It'll ask whether you want to do uh, a backup of your current install or just delete it. And um, you don't have to, but I recommend starting this in Tmux because I do have some uh, language servers that get installed at the end if you want. It will ask you if you want, but for that to go through, you need to have Tmux running just because the way there's a better way to do it, I'm sure, but that's just the way I have it set up. So now that I have that installed, I'm going to type in Tmux and then I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, and let it run. It will ask us some questions here in a moment. Uh, would you like to link Vim to NeoVim? That way you can just type Vim and it will actually start NeoVim. Uh, you can hit N and enter to say no. Anything else, you just hit enter and it will now link it. 
What do you want to do with the current install? You can just hit do nothing since I haven't installed anything yet, but it's it's best to either back up or remove. You want to make sure there's not already a, a NeoVim configuration set up. So I'm just going to say remove. It doesn't actually exist on this machine because it's a new machine. And there we go. We have lazy vim installed. It's going to go through. It's going to pull down a whole bunch of lazy vim plugins and packages. Uh, it's going to actually compile some right here. At this pointer is going to hit Q to get out of that, and then it will continue. It'll only take a moment. And once this is done, you'll see this build will say, well, this will go away. I'm doing this in real time, so I'm just talking right now. <laughs> okay, and now it's checking some things. And now we can just hit Q and Q. My script's going to continue. Since we ran the Tmux command before we ran the, the setup, it's going to ask, do you want to install the LSPs, the language servers? And these are just language servers I like. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And it's using Tmux to split the screen and send a signal to install these LSPs. You don't have to do that. These are just ones I like. This will help formatting and indenting and auto-completion for things like HTML and JSON and uh, uh, CSS and a bunch of other um, programming languages and file formats. And then once that's done, the script is going to be done and we can start using it. So I don't know exactly how long that took, but we are done. We hit Q and Q again. And now I can just type in Vim and I am at the Vim setup. See, FBK Vim. And it tells you the link to where you could get that. And uh, now we can start creating a new file, right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, so there's a lot of things I have set up. So uh, let's look at... Let's look at the install script that we just ran real quick, right? So you know what's going on. And again, I've been modifying this a lot. First of all, it's gonna look for these dependencies. So we ran that command to install these dependencies. If you didn't, it's going to check to see if they all uh, exist. If not, it's going to install them. Why did I run it first? Because I wanted to start the script with Tmux, okay? But if you didn't, that's fine. It's just not gonna install those language uh, uh, server packages at the end. Okay, at this point, it's going to go which NVim? So it's going to see, do you have NeoVim installed? And if not, then it's going to run this function, which is going to pull down at this point, it's going to be NeoVim 0.9.5. It's going to pull down that tar. It's going to untar it to your USR share folder. And then it's going to link that executable to NeoVim inside your U USR local bin. That way you can access it anywhere. The only issue I could see happening with this is if you did install an older version of uh, NeoVim, it will skip this and then you'll have issues. It will tell you that the configuration is not compatible with your current version of NeoVim. So you would uninstall what you have installed and then run the script again. Uh, at this point, it's going to ask, do you want to link Vim to NeoVim? And as long as you don't press no, it's going to link that as we discussed when we were doing it. Okay, next it's going to say, do you want to back up your current configs? We can do nothing, back up, and remove. Okay, so... We continue with that. If you said backup, it's going to create backups. If you're going to, if you say remove, it's just going to delete those your current configuration. Next, it's going to pull down using Git. It's going to clone the lazy vim starter to your config directory for NeoVim. It's going to remove the .git, uh, uh, .git file. So this is basically if you go to the lazy vim website, this is how you install it. This is just copied from their website. Here we're saying hello user, just so you can see who your user is. What this is doing. When you went through that, it cloned my repository to uh, the NeoVim Lua FBK folder. This is checking to see if you're me. If your username is MetalX1000, instead of cloning the HTTPS, it's actually going to use the Git um, URL to download that. That means basically on my machines where I'm uh, MetalX1000, if, when I modify the stuff, I can push it back up to the server. If you're not MetalX1000, it's going to skip that and just automatically download it without having to type in a password. If your username just happened to be MetalX1000, it's going to ask you your password, but you don't have my password, so you won't be able to clone it that way. Uh, so for the most part, this line is for my machines. This will be everybody else. Okay, this uh, checker, okay, that disables the LazyVim setup. There are a few pop-ups. Whenever you start NeoVim, it's going to check for updates and pop up these messages every single time. This is a line that changes one line in the LazyVim uh, script to disable that so you don't get those pop-ups every time you start uh, NeoVim. Next, it's going to add the uh, FPK, my plugin, 
to your uh, NeoVim config so that my commands run, my plugins run when you run NeoVim. This part uh, is not so much tied to NeoVim, but your terminal. It's going to download some fonts uh, so that if we go back over here, when I type in Vim or NeoVim, uh, let's see, actually, let's go vim1.html, so it's an HTML file. Automatically, my scripts will, for certain file formats, will create a template for you. So this was an, a, a brand new file. It goes, oh, it doesn't exist. Put this template, this basic boilerplate, if you will, for HTML. But you'll notice that as we do this with certain things, like there's an HTML5, HTML5 icon down here. If it was a PHP file, let's do that, vim1.php, you'll see it has the little elephant. If we make a uh, bash file, a shell script, it puts a little terminal icon. All those icons, and I think this icon, and this icon, there's a bunch of icons that it displays. They will not display property if you don't have uh, this installed, or at least something similar. So it's just downloading a font. It checks, is this font available on your system? If not, download and install it for that user. Um, so that's what this little if-then statement is doing. <clears throat> Okay, next, I have a directory. And again, there's probably a better way to do this. I have a plugins directory in my FBK directory uh, that actually disables and does some other things for the lazy vim configuration. I'm sure there's probably something I could put directly in my configuration to disable that, but the only way I could figure out was to copy these plugins that I've created into the default plugin directory. So uh, what are those things? Let's go ahead and go into uh, our home directory, config, nvim, and we're going to go Lua FBK plugins. So I have three files here. I have disable, so let's look at what's in disable here. So we have basically, uh, it's disabling notify. This is another plugin that updates you on stuff. Every time you start up uh, vim without this disabled set to false, there's gonna be a little pop-up in the corner for a few seconds. It drove me crazy, so I got rid of that. And then um, I think that this uh, mini pairs, yes. You may or may not want this. You may want to delete this line. I personally cannot stand when a program, uh, an IDE or a text editor tries to auto close um, quotation marks and brackets. It drives me crazy because I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> so this actually disables by default. Lazy Vim will close your quotations for you, close your curly brackets and your braces and whatnot. I disable that. So you may or may not want to go in and re-enable that. Uh, so that's what that disable file is doing. It's basically disabling those two things. Uh, let's see what this is. Do, 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 do. This is uh, setting up some completion stuff. I forget why I can put this in here. I should have put a, a comment in there. <laughs> um, and then dash. Oh, I forget what dash is. This is just basically, there were certain things that I wanted to change how Lazy Vim worked, and I can play, create these plugins. Uh, someone, someone probably out there knows. I, I really should have put comments in there, but these are settings. If you don't like those things, you can just delete those plugins, and they will no longer affect the uh, NeoVim install. Okay, next we're going to continue with this. Uh, we're going to create an alias. This alias is called FBK Vim underscore update. And once we've cloned all my stuff, there is now a script called uh, vim update, vim, uh, fbk vim update, uh, and we're just basically aliasing that, whether you're in Z shell or bash. If you're using some other shell, you'll have to add this GRC file. But basically, uh, if I add stuff to my repository right now, uh, I would have to reload, let's just go bash. I would have to type in fbk that, and basically it's just going to pull down any updates to and copy over those, um, plugins that we just talked about. So that's just a quick and easy script or uh, alias that's set up for updating my configuration. So as time goes on, if you want to get the latest of what I've set up, you run that and it should update stuff. Okay, now uh, we have a function here which checks, okay, uh, are you in a tmux session? If not, it just skips that. Uh, if it is, then it's going to ask, do you want to install uh, those LPSs? And again, it's going to check to make sure that 
yes, you're in a TMUX session, and yes, you clicked yes, and then it will try to install those uh, uh, LSPs. Now, if you want to manually install stuff, you go into Vim, you type in colon, and you type in Mason, and hit enter, and then here you are. You have your different things, linters, uh, formatters, LSPs. We're looking at all here. You can hit forward slash, and let me just type in something like XML. Okay, so here's one that, that for XML and LSP for XML, I can hit forward slash and find another one. This one does a bunch of stuff. But when you get to a line, so XML formatter, I just hit I. And now if you up page to go back up to the top here, you'll see, if I can get all the way back up there. Uh, well, that one's failing because uh, Python problem. Normally, that's how you install stuff. Let's go ahead and just say shell. Okay, let's say you wanted to install an LSP, which is language. It just If you're working with, in this case, a PowerShell, let's say you're writing PowerShell scripts, you may want something to help uh, format and, and, and auto-complete stuff. Hit I. Again, we'll go back up to the top here. You should see that. It's already installed before I even got back up to the top. So that's how you would manually install stuff. My script tries to install a few that I like by default. Well, again, I didn't show you too much about how what it can do, and we'll do that in a future video, but I wanted to show you how to set it up and get going. Uh, but look over the notes for Lazy Vim because it's that set up with a few things changed for my stuff, but then it's going to have a whole bunch of my templates, uh, snippets, as you will, and we will talk about that in a future video. I do thank you for watching. Again, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.